grade 8 students, welcome to another episode of New Learning Filled with Knowledge and Fun. I am your art teacher, Teacher Katrin Candido. Join me and together let us take this art blowing journey as we explore the world of East Asian art. Are you all excited to learn? Let's go! But first, let us have our prayer. Please bow your heads and let us pray. Dear Jesus, please show me how to spend this day sharing your love in every way. Help me to be kind to everyone, to play and love and have lots of fun, shining your light and giving your grace, sharing your joy with a smile on my face. Angel of God, my guardian dear, to whom God's love commits me here. Ever this day, be at my side, to light and guard, to rule and guide. Amen. For your attendance, I will be sending the link of Google Form to your group chat. If you can't access the link, kindly send me your complete name and section. These are my social media accounts. As we go along with our lessons, may you be guided by our important online netiquette. Number one, be on time. Number two, avoid unnecessary comments on the chat box. Number three, respect everyone. Number four, no hate speech. Number five, take down notes while listening and watching. Number six, extend help to your classmates. Here are the most essential learning competencies in today's lesson. Define elements and principles of art in East Asia. Reflect the arts of East Asia. For our first activity, this activity is called Two Picks, One Spot. From the two pictures shown, identify in which country they belong. Answers are only China, Japan, and Korea. I will be giving you 10 seconds to answer. Just comment your answer on the comment box below. Time's up. For number one, the answer is China. Time's up. For number two, the answer is Japan. Time's up. For number three, the answer is Korea. Wow! I guess you all got it right. Funny that we are all familiar and we can identify right away in which country they belong. Truly, these three countries has a great influence to us. For the review, let us recall the following terminologies. Arts is a diverse range of human activities involving the creation of visual, auditory, or performing artifacts, which express the creator's imagination, conceptual ideas, or technical skill, intended to be appreciated primarily for their beauty or emotional power. Crafts Crafts is an activity involving skills in making things by hands. Arts and crafts describes a wide variety of activities involving making things with one's own hands.
before we proceed with our lesson for today, let us answer the following questions. Number one, what are the countries in East Asia? Countries in East Asia include China, Hong Kong, Japan, Macau, Mongolia, North Korea, South Korea, and Taiwan. But in our lesson for today, we will only be focusing in the arts and crafts of the three countries, the China, Japan, and Korea. Number two, what is the role of arts and crafts in the community? For a thousand of years, humans have created different forms of arts and crafts. They have become an integral part of different cultures in society. Sadly, some people no longer take arts and crafts seriously because they believe anyone can do them. This is why different countries around the world have been doing their best to preserve, revive the dying industry of arts and crafts. It is important to save, protect, and support the arts and crafts in our community. For our last question, what do you think is the essence of learning the arts and crafts from other countries? Arts and crafts reflect an individual's or society's view, character, behavior, beliefs, and more. This means that people can learn more about a person or a society simply by studying their arts and crafts. The Egyptian and Greek civilizations are great examples. We were able to get to know more about the people during those ancient times because of their magnificent arts and crafts. We live in a world where countries have different languages and dialects. And although we have English as our universal language, many people still don't know how to speak it. Fortunately, arts and crafts are considered universal forms of communication. They can speak to everyone and evoke emotions thoughts, or ideas. The success of many economies around the world relies on tourism. It can boost economies' revenue, develop infrastructures of the country, and create thousands of jobs. But tourism continues to be one of the sectors hardest hit by the pandemic, and the outlook remains highly uncertain. So for now, I want you to listen as I will show you the beauty of East Asia. At this point, I will further discuss the different paintings of East Asia and their characteristics. The paintings of East Asian countries portray different subjects, themes, or motifs. Let us now travel to the land of the sleeping giant, China. Welcome to the land of sleeping giant, China. Chinese paintings is consists of different subjects or themes. This includes flowers and birds, landscapes, palaces and temples, human figures, animals, bamboos and stones. Moreover, Landscape painting was regarded as the highest form of Chinese painting. They consider three important concepts of their arts in order. Heaven, Earth, and Humankind. The Yin-Yang, China is basically an agricultural country which enabled them to understand the pattern of nature and live in accordance with it. This is an example of a Chinese painting. That expresses the human understanding of relationship between nature and human. Silk was often used as a fabric, but only China create paintings and calligraphy on silk mediums. They are mounted on scrolls and landscape paintings, which later were made on paper after its discovery by Kai Lun in 1st century which provide not only cheap widespread medium for writing but also made painting more economical. Their belief and religion also have great influence on East Asian arts, 
Chinese art followed the ideologies of Confucianism, Taoism, and Buddhism, which played important role in East Asian arts. Do you know the Chinese characters written on the painting? This is known as calligraphy, which is the art of beautiful handwriting. Chinese poets write their calligraphy on their paintings. It offers an important channel for the appreciation of traditional culture for art education. Your beautiful handwriting is considered calligraphy. Now, let us explore the land of the rising sun, Japan. Konnichiwa! Welcome to the land of the rising sun, Japan. In Japan, people use a technique for printing text, images, or patterns which they called woodblock printing. It is originated in China as a method of printing on textile but eventually become a method for printing on paper. It became one of the oldest and most highly developed visual arts. Most common theme or subject for printmaking describes scenes from everyday life. It narrates scenes and often packed with figures and details. This is an example of Japan woodblock printing of the famous Mount Fuji. Another example of Japanese art using woodblock printing is the Ukiyo-e, which shows scenes of harmony and carefree everyday living of a Japanese people. Origami. The term origami came from Ori meaning folding and kami means paper. It is a traditional Japanese art paper folding which started in 17th century. The earlier showing paper folding is a picture of Tractacus de Spirem Mundi from 1460 by Johannes de Sacro Bosco. Now let us go to the Kamuki makeup of Japan or the Kesho. It is an interpretation of the actor's own role through medium of the facial feature. On stage, this interpretation becomes a temporalization of makeup in collaboration with the audience. Kabuki makeup is also another way of face painting which has two types. Number one, standard makeup. It mostly applied to the actors. Number two, kumadori makeup. Applied to villains and heroes. It is composed of very dramatic lines and shapes using colors that represent certain qualities. Dark red. It means passion or anger. Dark blue. This means depression or sadness. Pink. Represents youth. Light green. Means calm. Black. And purple means nobility. Now, let us move forward to the land of high mountains and sparking streets, Korea. Annyeonghaseyo! Welcome to the land of high mountains and sparking streets, Korea. The history of Korean painting dates to 108 CE when it appears as an independent form. It is said that until the Joseon dynasty, the primary influence of Korean paintings were Chinese paintings. Mountains are important features of Korean landscape painting because it is the site for building temples and buildings. In South Korea and North Korea, subjects are divided into five categories. These are landscape paintings, minwa, which means traditional folk painting, and we have the four gracious plants, the plum blossom, orchids, chrysanthemums, and bamboo. We also have bamboos, 
and four trees. Let us examine this Korean painting. What is the subject that is being portrayed? Yes, this Korean painting portrays the four gracious plants, which is the plum blossom, orchids, chrysanthemums, and bamboo, which represent the country's four seasons, the spring, summer, fall, and winter. Truly, East Asian arts are marvelous because they reflect the rich and unique culture of China, Japan, and Korea. Did you understand? Wow! Okay, let's proceed. Our discussion focuses on paintings, as painting is the highest form of arts in East Asia. In relation to this, let us have an activity in which you are going to identify the subjects of the painting. I will give you 60 seconds to answer. Your timer starts now. does not belong to the group is letter C because it is a woodblock print showing the ordinary living of a Japanese people near Mount Fuji. Let's proceed to the second question. By looking at this Korean painting, how will you describe its theme or motif? Letter A, it tells about the daily living of Korea. Letter B, it portrays the mountainous terrains of Korea. Letter C, it shows the natural habitat of flowers and birds. And letter D, it illustrates the natural scenery of bamboos and stones. Your time starts now. The answer 
is letter B. It portrays the mountainous terrains of Korea. For the third question, China is into brush painting. Japan is to black. A. Calligraphy. B. Sand casting. C. Wood carving. D. Woodblock printing. Your time starts now. Time's up. The answer is letter D. Woodblock printing. For the fourth question, who invented the paper during the Eastern Han Dynasty? A. Kai Lun, B. Queen Billy, C. Joseon, D. Mundi. Your time starts now. Time's up. The answer is letter A. Invented the paper during the Eastern Han Dynasty. Now let us proceed to the last question. What is the earliest documented paper folding? A. Flower. B. Boat. C. Bird. D. Crane. Your timer starts now. Letter B. The earliest documented paper folding is both. How's your score? I believe you did great. To deepen your understanding and apply the knowledge and skills that you have learned in this lesson, I want you to do this activity for your assignment. In a 1-8 illustration board, paint an example of a landscape painting based on the three Asian countries. Use available materials like crayons, pencils, and watercolors. This will be the rubrics for this activity. That you have learned and enjoyed our lesson. Let us remember that East Asian countries generally focus on nature as their subject or themes in their arts and crafts. Learning the art concept of China, Japan, and Korea will be helpful for us to deepen our understanding and appreciation about the arts of East Asia. Before I will end my lesson, let me share to you this quote from Threadless Artist Matthew. Art speaks when words are unable to explain. And that's the end of our lesson. This is Teacher Katrin. Thank you for listening and keep safe. See you on our next art class.